All right, so we're going to be doing a restorative slash bones class today. So I want you to set up next to a wall. So what you have is your bolster tipped up on a blanket or a cushion. You, you can use other things in these blankets, but you basically want a tilted height so that your back will have more ease and you'll be able to stretch your ribs and your breathing muscles. That's one of the reasons why we lift it up like this is to stretch your, I guess you could say your breath, okay? So I have my seat right next to the bolster. Okay, you may be familiar with the shape. Okay, name the shape, cobbler's pose. So I have a couple blocks and they're lifted up to the second setting. I have my feet connected, the soles and the, the toes are kind of trying to figure out how to touch to the wall. I have a little baseboard. You might likely do, but however you work with this, the wall is a kind of a motivator for our the success of, of circulation into the muscles, I find. And you might work on having your belt over your head, around your waist. It's in a loop already. You can buckle it up. And then also hook it around your feet to your ankles. You can't see that. It's around my ankles. And I have it over my feet to the front of my the foot to the ankle bed. I guess that's not really the ankle bed, but it sounds interesting. And I'm gonna make sure the buckle is near my hip, essential. So you can get out if you have an emergency. Okay. I mean, I have a fire detector right above me, so that hasn't gone off in our class yet, but it could happen someday. We could have a beep, beep. <laughs> okay. Now when you lower back and you have that lift of the legs, ensure that you have sand nearby, just in case you're gonna access that for your breathing work. And when your head is lowered back to the support, you know, find that the support is just enough. It's not necessarily as much as you'd like. You might like to be lifted up more so there's less energetic um, musculature that you're trying to pull to get yourself in this position. But that's half of it is you wanna feel like you're doing a little bit of something. Okay, so I've got my feet connected. They're sort of touching the wall. It's not a perfect uh, scenario with both feet, but I'm trying to get a feeling that I'm connected to the wall. My legs are elevated, and then I like to use sand in this version across the ribs. You could um, opt out. You could also have sand on each thigh. You could add the sand in a few moments. And if it does go on the ribs and it feels like it's kind of hooked onto the ribs, but it's sort of sliding, that's kind of where you want it. So you'll feel like you're on the edge with your breath kind of riding that balance with the weight. So that's like weight training for the breathing muscles. Now, even if it slides down to your belly, what it's not a big deal. It's just sand. You can kind of curl it around until it's in the right laying across the ribs. Bring your arms open, they can either be in two different dimensions of concentration here. You can have them out resting. You can have them back overhead, interlacing your fingers and turning the hands inside out to stretch the arms back. Yeah. And your choice is when you get the feel of the breath, if your arms are behind you, right? It's, it's less restful, right? If your arms are behind you holding, but it's, it's permission to center on the breath pace. So think of these ways that we move into focus or you could say control of our mindset and that's on the breath. And the fun part of the yoga practice is we change our body shape so frequently compared to maybe if you didn't, weren't in a practice that you can study where the breath has movement. So if the arms are still overhead, I want you to relax the clasp of the hands and then separate the arms out to the sides and let the back of the hands rest on the ground. Relax your breath. Feel the energy of the inhale filling the body. And at that same moment when you breathe in, 
the abdomen or the area of organs in the abdome has some fluctuation and movement. And you can feel it stretch, but it's, it's not like the full extent. You want to feel like you can go back and forth with the breath. Massaging in the organs, but also the intestines. Since there's no bones in that part of the body, right, in the belly. The breath is the one way you can channel movement and massage on your own. It's just with the breath. And relax the throat, the mouth. Now take a moment as you remove the sand to ensure that your neck is comfortable, okay? So before we do any access into using a ball and, and working into the hip, be sure that this upper reservoir, because we were working on the abdominal zone, was motioning. Now, of course, it will automatically do movement just even without your influence, but you want to be sure that this upper area is not going to be, you know, feeling extra restriction when you're moving your hip around. So you might need to wad up the blanket a little bit under your neck. You might be just fine with it. it. It could have a little bit of pull, but you're going to work with that. But the idea is that your head stays back when you work on the hip. So even if you have to look at the screen here and there, try to come back to your head back onto the blanket. Unbuckle. And then as you slide the belt away from the legs, you'll point the knees up. And once the knees point up, see if you can kind of scoot your feet so they feel like they're to the edge of the mat, right? They're parallel, they're not turning in right now. Just get a feel of that stance. Feel how your feet try to, to press down, but there's probably even more pressure in the back of the one to the rear touching the ground. It's just more content, right, versus from your knee to your foot. That's purely the truth. So I want you to scoot your feet back to what is a little wider than hips distance. And then feel where that left knee can kind of go a little bit out into center, it can kind of wobble back and forth. So what happens when the knee goes out in center, you're just going back and forth, windshield wiper kind of with the left leg. You hopefully move your foot too. So I'm, I'm just bringing this up because I don't talk about the bottom foot except for turn it. But this it gives you some awareness that, well, yeah, my knee goes out, my, I roll into the side of my foot. So now come back to center with the left knee and lift up the right foot. And this can be a little bit of a back um, kind of charger, I find like back tension. So I'm gonna lift my foot and then swing the foot to the left knee now, as I lean to the left with my left leg, I'm going to use a ball. And of course, you might need to lift your head a little bit to get things. But once you are back with your head on the blanket, again, if you need to chunk up the blanket under your head, do so. But place the ball in the upper outer left leg, and then you're rolling on the side of that left foot. Right? Just like we need a windshield wiper side to side. Maybe you're going to get some supportive angle to the muscles in the lower leg, the bones, you know. And as you hold on to that right knee with your left hand, feel that you can do both pulling towards you and then feeling that leg cross over to the left. Of course, you're not taking it off your knee, your foot. So manage the circulation. It could be not the most intense stretch you can find in this hip, that's what I want you to find is something kind of in between. You can feel what you're touching on the props and you can feel that sizable pull through your hip and feel where the weight of the upper body, especially can you get the spine to center on the bolster. 
I don't usually think spine. I feel spine. It's usually muscles that are attached that I connect to. So just kind of lay your emphasis into the spine, centering. It's not getting any shorter. This is a nice pose for that. You're creating that interior motion. So you're extending out of your spine, out of the pelvis. Okay, now I want you to switch the sides, but keep in mind that once your right foot comes down, you don't need to go windshield wiper, windshield wiper, but you might need that repetition of reminding how you kind of roll into your foot. So the left foot crosses to the right, it crosses over the knee on that right leg, so it's not on top of the knee, it crosses. And then as you place the ball beside the right hip, Tilt the body weight. And so when you're tilting, you want to make sure that your waist is on the bolster and you're not rolling to the side. You're not, it's not intentional for you to roll to the side and, and take notes, right? It's intentional to just be present, back centered. And then maybe if you can get a hold of your knee with your right hand, try for that. I'm working today with my left arm, well, on this side, my arm relaxed. We've done this before with the arm reaching back. I'm just trying to find the, the basin focus. So it's almost just more basic work, fundamental for the hip. If your foot is touching on a block or something, you probably don't want that distraction because likely some part of your muscle is holding back somewhere in the leg. So just hold on to the knee, center onto the ball, and breathe. If you're aiming to get more sensation, you might work with pulling the, the leg a little bit more, using your right arm, using maybe not just your bicep, but a little more arm strength on the side of the arm. And the challenge is not to clench and to hold the knee and kind of and do make it just uncomfortable. I want you to feel that you're trying to get length out of the side of that leg. It's kind of tricky, isn't it? Because these muscle fibers, as we shift along, well, I hope loosen up. Okay, now release your grip. Center your right hand down, bring your knees back center. Find that sometimes the legs can do the movement to get you somewhere. We usually use our arms to get somewhere, get something more than our legs. Well, you know, to get our movement of our props. So I want you to just get a feel of your legs going a little side to side, uncross that left foot, and then move the ball aside, actually not too far out, you'll use it in the next pose. Knee side to side, windshield wiper, and feel that that kind of slides you a little bit down from the bolster, not too much, but it just gets you to move downwards, kind of sliding. And then you're going to roll your rib cage to the left and then turn and we'll come up. So we're on our left hip and be focused so you're getting weight bearing on your hip. So as you move your, your props around, you basically need your bolster across the mat. You're close to the wall, I know, so you don't wanna push your knee into the wall. So if you need to make movement, set up for side stage. If you're using, at this point, you could have lots of props, huh? You have bolster stacks and blankets. I'll keep it simple because we've added the idea of a chair today. So let's not add too many more items. So I've got my bolster on a horizontal across the mat, and I'll use a ball on the inside of that right leg. And then as I add my sand to my outer hip, my right hip, it actually proportionally works on my left hip because it's weight bearing, right? So feel, oh, I wish I had set this up. If I scratch across my floor, oh well. That's what cleaning's for. Um, if you can, this is something I wanted to do over and over, but I never have a set of chair for this. So if you want to get up and, and, and get your chair and all that, 
I really like this. This is oftentimes taught in some of the Iyengar workshops and uh, because you have so many props you're working with. But this is one way to do side stage. A little easier on my shoulder, a little more length on my side. If you don't do this, you can have your hand on a block, you can have your arm on the side. But, you know, this just opens it up. And part of the trap I think we get into when we use our blocks is that we have to kind of drop down and close in on the, the opportunity to get more space around the bones. And the last thing you want to do is shrink wrap and, and basically get shorter. So anything we can do to get more expansiveness. But if this doesn't work for your arm, then you don't use this option. But I just think this is nice to use if you can. You don't have to get too worked up to find your chair for the moment. But feel where your body is on its side, back to what we're doing. I know sporadically I'll get enthusiastic about my idea, just mid, mid pose. Resting the bones into the bolster and blankets. Okay. And let your eyes relax. You know, changing things up can be kind of exciting. So see if you can center past that and just experience the wave of circulation. If you're using the, the chair. If you're not, maybe it's still good. Feeling how the ribs expand and center. Okay, now when you feel how the leg parts are working, especially the left leg towards the bolster, you can't really change much of probably either leg pattern, but access that focus, right, with your awareness. If your arm is getting, you know, tingly, falling asleep, this means you've done the arm reach too long, you know, it's time to get out. But if it kind of maintains, like there's muscle, pull, you know, maybe a tiny bit of strain because you're efforting. You know, see if that can kind of help open up in the band of the shoulder. But again, if you've got some injury, you're nursing, I wouldn't do anything new and adventurous with the arm like this. Okay. Now we're only kind of one-sided with this reach, right? Even if it's the hip direction and the waist. But we're still going to entertain some cat-cow in between. So as you get a reach of the right arm, now you're lower it down. And I would encourage you to move the sand first before you turn and try to get into the table position. Take the sand away, roll to the left. And then as you come up, how about this? What we'll do is we got our, our prop set. So you'll, we'll, we'll work with simply the blanket under the knees. So place a blanket under your knees, okay? Place your hands on the other side of the bolster, okay? So you have enough space. If the bolster's in your way, you might have to shift it back towards your legs. But span the hands open. Now, maybe that's not as important as the sensation of the arm um, because you don't want to feel like you're shoving up in your shoulders, like you're just pre getting, just creating tension. So try to press so you create length but you don't want to be uh, kind of rounding down here. You want to create stability. So my feet are at the wall, which I actually really like. It kind of runs into the circulation of my legs. Round your back into cat. Chin has to go towards the chest. Inhale, really stay focused on yourself. Arch the spine, feel how you move your head a little forward and the hips back. Exhale, round the back, feel the spine stretching from the center of the spine in both directions, tail and brain stem. We're going to feel both those directions alternating the arch. Arch and flex.
can you find that stability, or I guess you could say that stillness and center and table. And then we'll lift up the knees. So lift the knees up and lower the heels so that they're, they're at the wall. Maybe if you have a little baseboard, that's a good space to put your heels. If you're pretty enthusiastic and want to lower your heels to the floor next to the wall, go for it. If it works, I mean, generally, they're either going to let you, they're going to go with that or they're going to be restricted. So feel how you push the floor away and you feel the hips lifting. Well, I don't feel my hips actually happy to lift. I have to use a little bit of resistance to get them to lift. Okay. Now with that resistance and a lot of accumulative, right, motion into our bones, right, st stacking them up. You'll step your feet together. Don't step over them, <laughs> one over the other. And you'll try to lift a, a right leg up to the wall. You'll just work with this standing three-legged dog position. I know the arms are feeling an increased amount of load. So you can always come down to your knees and then try to come back up with the leg. And just give it a few moments. The knee's gonna curve. It's gonna be kind of in this, in this um, little bit of a, of, a, of a scoop with the knee. It's not gonna be a straight exact leg. The lower down the right foot, please, and then switch the left foot up. Even if the arms are changing their capacity, you wanna to try to press the floor away. Keep the head if it can move down, so the crown of the head is, is tilting downwards versus pushing back and up. That'll create more weight in your arms when I go like this. It's more weight in my arms if I'm like this. It's more into my legs, okay. Now, as you feel the left foot come down happily, it goes fast, isn't it? <laughs> Lower down the knees. And then take a reach with your hands on the blanket, head down. You know, if you happen to want to get a little different reach, you can put your bolster on top of your blanket and stretch your arms this way. This is kind of nice to do. I love this feeling. Just through my back, my head is complete center. That's one thing that's centered in most of your poses is your brain on top of the spine. Brain credit. Okay, now come up, taking any props you have that you've kind of moved around, you know, back in order carefully. Place your blanket on the other side of the bolster and then turn to your side stage with the left hip down. So I'm going to shift over, turning away from, <clears throat> away from you for a moment, and taking my ball on the inside of the left leg. I'm going to use the sand to the left side, but get a feel here when you have that support. I have it turned this way. Last time I, I remember I had it cross, so it would kind of mimic the last side, but also it creates that weight bearing down to the other side of the pelvis, right? So when we work with that, we lower and we reach. And maybe you happen to be using a chair, maybe you have your arm to the block overhead on the other side, if you're not using the chair, you might have something like this, like your block, just fine. You might have your arm on the side or the bolster. Okay, so manage the focus of the leg parts, the bend of the right knee, the awareness in this left side. If the chair doesn't feel like it's doing a lot and you want more and more and more, keep in mind it's to find balance in the, 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 the sleeve, right? So I don't want you to overdo it. You don't need to push your chair farther back and strain. So it's, it's about creating space Right, in the ribs, in the spine, into the arm. Yeah, so be sensitive to, to being simple here. Simplicity yeah, matters in the practice. Okay, let the weight of your head rest into the blankets, which, whichever way you're moving your arm. Weight into that right side. Breathing slow. Closing your eyes. Mm -hmm. 
you know, as we kind of refine our our awareness in the side, these are, are really helpful shapes to kind of wake up the, the breathing um, circulation patterns, right, that we can evoke in our yoga. So when we come down with the left arm, I find when I, when I come up to sitting, it's a different um, experience for my stability, right, in my core. So you'll slide your sand away and just get a feel how the side is still has a little reach just by lying on it. It's pretty nice for your, your ribs. But when they're here, don't get up quite yet. You got your ribs so they're even if you're not trying to mag, you know, do as much of a massive reach of them, they're still generally opening when they're on the side. Okay, so just kind of close your eyes and kind of notice, okay, my ribs, this is what they're feeling like. I have the potential to keep them laying this whole space widening. Now roll to the right and then come up and we're gonna sit on our bolster. Yep, you're gonna want to get pretty close, well, close-ish to the wall so your feet can touch the wall. So first things first, let's just, and I think you'll, get, you'll need a belt unless you tend to put your foot over your head off and sit like that, then you'll probably need a belt. Um, maybe you practice things like that for fun. So if you do, you, you'll be able to do that kind of thing today. All right, so why not? We'll try. So feet at the wall. First things, you have your, your seat at the bolster. And I want you to feel like you're, you're not falling off the front of it. So if anything, I'm going to scoot my a little bit front so I feel right smack dab in the middle of this. Okay, if anything, I kind of. Humpty Dumpty off the back, that's okay. It's not going to be harmful for my, my, my body. Okay, so push into the wall like you're, see if you can push with your feet. You don't have to make a hole in your wall, but if you're on the base of the, the baseboard, you're on the base, the toes are kind of pushed in a little bit that way. You don't need to put your feet up the wall. But see if there's any energy pushing through and then how the back responds is likely to arch. Not bad, I'd rather have you find more arch here, good, than to have this rounding. I don't even want to show it, but you know, slumping over, okay? It's just not even helpful to show it. So you might feel like your hip flexors <laughs> get a little workout with this one. We'll, we'll work on them though today, okay? So push with your right foot, slide with your left foot up, so the knee points up, now, as I cross the right, sorry, the left leg over the right leg, I've got both feet trying to be, you know, the toes stretching forward from the bones of the foot. So this foot crossing, I don't want it turned out, turned in. It's kind of challenging, but I think between your knee and your ankle, you can keep that form of circuit strength. Now, you want to be able to push down a little bit into your left foot. Not so much you try to stand up. Okay, just get a feel here. Get a feel for the, the waist. Reach with your hands to the leg. Don't, you don't have to clasp your hands, but you could. I'm going to work with kind of this experience of, of getting a mild grip with my hands on my left leg. And then, well, this is exciting because there's a chair back there. I wish I set this up. Maybe I'll be getting better as time goes on here. <laughs> okay, turn to the left. Hook the right elbow to that left leg and bring your hand back. And if you have the chair, it's pretty excellent. You can put your hand on the chair. I'm gonna go ahead and do it because it's just too good. Too good of an experience to miss out on. Okay. Well, I guess I need to get back into using my chair. All right. So we're working on creating some spine lift. I don't want you to have the chair too close if you're using it, if you're not using it. You decide it's too much of a hassle, okay. So your hand is either down or it's up. Now, keep in mind, if it's down, you're rounding, no matter how you look at it, you're still doing some rounding. So if you have it up, you're working a little bit more on lift. And most of us don't wanna do more rounding. So try to push your right foot into the wall. Try to feel that push. The left foot might be having a little bit of a challenge to stay grounded because you're, your knee wants to swing open, your left knee, 
So you're hooking your elbow to that left leg to pull it in. So it's all resistance. The things we do to love our bodies, huh? Okay. All right, now get a, a, find the balance between your, scan the awareness of your right foot through your right seat, sitting bone, up through your spine, just kind of scan that experience. Okay, now turn back to the face the wall and get a belt, two versions you can choose from. Okay, version one is the more advanced, but it's already, the foot is at the wall, so we try that. So I'm gonna probably find both of them and then see what I, what I wanna stay with. So you have your left foot, lift it, take your belt under your left foot, lift it. All right, so simple. Right foot at the wall, left leg up. Let's say you're someone who holds your foot off in times like this. There's some of us that might do that. Uh, we have range of motion, this is easy. I'd rather have you try it this way if you can, if you can, because you're working your muscles in your back and you're actually a little bit more balanced, right, in your core. But if you want an extremity addition, you use a belt. It's okay, if you use a belt, I, I can see benefit to belt. And if you get a hold of your leg with your foot without your, your belt, you're working towards, you know, yeah, there you go. Yeah, because, you know, see, if you have your foot with your hands, you're, you're going to try to keep pulling your, your body forward towards the leg. If you've got the belt, I can kind of round my back to do this. So if you have your foot and it's, it's shaky, let's try version two. Okay. So this one, a little more challenging. Okay, now version two, if you're holding your foot, well, however you are, you're holding your foot somehow, lower the left foot down. Okay, now bring the right leg, at least we only have two legs, <laughs> cross it under so the right leg is bent. It's just a simple cross-legged position, so it's, it's below the close to the uh, bolster. So it's just a little easier for you to sit up versus pushing the wall. Now take that left foot and lift up again. Okay, now see if that's easier. I find it easier when my bottom leg is bending to do this versus my bottom leg straight. It's just a little easier on my hip flexors. So get a feel with that. If the top of your thigh is upset, you know, if the left leg, there's not much you can do until we get to our bridge pose. But for now, you're working on trying to stimulate from the back to the front. You're trying to move forward, right versus rounding back. All right, that's just what backs do. They round back. Okay. All right. Part of their, their job requirement, I guess. So as they're issued to the body, this is what I do. So feel how the leg is lifting. If you're holding onto it with your hands, right? You're trying to work on moving towards the leg and moving the leg towards you. And you're working on stimulating into the bone. So just this hold is resistance, right? It's a lot of resistance just to maintain. Breathing helps. Okay, it's a workout. It is just to get this position, belt or no belt. Okay, now that you're a little lopsided, bend to the left leg and take the left foot. So you're gonna just cross it forward of the right shin or knee if you wanna go that far. Scoot yourself back and you don't have to reach to your chair, but you might wanna give a try of that, just getting your shoulders back, your chest open. You could do that on the bolster too. You can see how this chair is, is just helpful in getting your lift, okay? And now reach your hands to the wall. So you're going all the way to the wall with the hands. You're probably interested in adding sand to your left leg, but let's just keep it simple right now. It's enough already, I think. So feeling the legs in a crisscross position, feeling the hands press to the wall, Maybe your head shifts down because you're interested in, in a little more in the hip. I feel how you tilt down. I hope you feel a stretch even without a sandbag. Breathing through the back spaces, through the upper 
lungs. Okay, now when we come back, if this feels kind of a nice balancing for your, your waist into your shoulders, see if you can find your way back, um, carefully moving into your mid-body support. So maybe your hands go to your waist. Anything so you can remind yourself to keep this, this little bit of a lift, even if it's just pretend, okay? So now we'll take the left foot forward. And we'll cross the right leg over the left leg. Yeah, and if you need to adjust where your bolster is, if you want to move it a little bit back, or if you just feel like you're falling off of it, you, you change it up. I just feel comfortable by kind of smack dab in the middle, a little towards the back. So now you can tell how this knee angle from the knee, it crosses down to the ankle. So your work is on trying to move it towards the center and up. Right. And most leg muscle attachments to the hip are a little fried. So you're trying to work on recreating that. Right. This is why this is part, part recreation today. <laughs> okay, Recreate this motion. And now as you turn to the right, you rotate to the right. Right hand is on the blanket or the chair. Some of you will remember doing some of this chair work where we kind of would hook our hand to the, the just the side, the back arm of the chair towards the seat and try to get a support. Yeah, they are very helpful. So the left arm is to the right leg. Now what I find helpful for me is if I have my hand on a blanket or like I stacked it up a little higher, I have a little, I find that the chair gives me a little bit more kind of inner, inner lift, inner up. It just kind of goes upright, but it's probably because it just makes me feel a little taller. So you choose, chair, no chair. Left arm can bend, it can straighten. However, you can feel this inner lift. Because I just felt a little more just a moment ago, but all before that, not a real good lift. So. Working on rotating, lifting, closing your eyes to feel how to get there. And if you're trying to shrink wrap your belly and, and pull in the muscles, I want you to try to let your abdomen relax so you can strengthen your diaphragm. Nobody wants to weaken their diaphragm. So when you rotate, just let your abdomen move with the breath. Okay, feel the left foot at the wall. If it's getting kind of weak, the, the foot is just there. See if you can activate pushing into the wall. Now unwind and then take that right leg. Here we go. We get our leg and we lift it up, right? Or maybe you get your belt and you lift it up. Simple. A lot of leg work, right? We usually do our leg stuff on a bath, right? We get our belt, we're reclining. It's pretty elementary that way, but that's how I generally work with that. But today, a little bit more strength work for the core, for the upper arms. And I generally think about the work with our arms as we're trying to get around the back of the arm or under, under the arm. Well, we do a lot of bicep work just during the day, holding packages and so forth. So that's just not as, as is interesting, right, for this. So get a feel that you're trying to sit up, you're trying to use the arms. If you have the hands on the foot, sometimes you just have done this for a long time, so it's a, it's just in your habit, your wheelhouse of, of tricks. So if you're finding that is working, but you need to bend your knee a lot, that's okay. I'd rather have you try it with the knee bending a lot than so that you can access those back muscles, right? It's, a little bit more back strength that you're going to blend into the position. But sometimes it's just not accessible with hands, right? So you find that the belt makes your arm a little longer. 
but it helps your flexibility too if you if you're not getting a hold of your foot with your hands and your leg could be shaking and it could happen for some people now try to add this this one version slide your left foot in so the leg is crossed under right so it's towards the bolster and then maybe you keep a hold of your foot maybe you have to come back down right and Get the leg under and then get a hold of the foot with either your hands or the belt. And you're, re you're really recreating this motion of the pelvis starting to stretch open in the back. Even if you almost fall off the bolster. It's fun to change it up. Same body, different ways of moving inside of it and threading the movements with the breath, come back to that curiosity of in and out breath, where it influences in the pose. The breath might not be interesting, but that you're in a shape and you're influencing it with the breath, right, to calm you down. And then just simply bend through that right leg, good work, not easy. Actually, it seems a little bit more entertaining to do with a group <laughs> by yourself, even if it's on Zoom. Okay, so I have the legs crossed. Last time I mentioned we could reach the chair, you could do that and repeat that. Um, sometimes reaching down to the, the legs of the chair can be interesting too, to get the shoulders to kind of move back. I find the seat is fine, but it's a little more in my my, my shoulder, my rotator cuff that I like. So just get a feel what works for you. Just a few moments, whether your hands are down on the bolster, on the chair, maybe you interlace your fingers and you stretch your chest that way. That's okay, either version. Either of those, those three versions there. Okay, and it, it is creating this arch. The reason I want you to find the arch of the spine first is so when you now come forward to reach to the wall, right, you don't round it quite as much. So you're trying to walk your hands up the wall, leaning into the wall. See if you can motion a little side to side to stimulate stretch into the hip. And if you're enthusiastic about adding sand, you could onto the right thigh, certainly. Breathing, centering your hips. Let your head shift downwards for a few moments. Okay, so with this kind of bending positions for the knees, for the hip joint, this kind of sets us so there's a, a good amount of blood flow in those areas, right, before we stand upright. So I want you just to get a few more moments of pushing into the wall with the arms. Okay, and let that move in towards the muscles, right, resistance. Okay, and then lower down, and if you might want to reach back to your bolster with your hands to come up, and then just feel both feet touching to the wall. Take a moment here, feel kind of how we started with the seated shape. So if you can feel a little bit of pull into the front of the hip, just notice that meaning that it's kind of gripping up here because you hinge here. And then we'll slide the feet in, and I want you to turn so that you're going to be towards the bolster now. If you got this chair kind of in the way, we're going to get up and use it in a moment. But I want you to just turn the bolster straight away from the wall and lean into it. So you have this now. If this is pushing the wall, you find you're getting into this accident with your props, and you might not like this version. But you can have the bolster this way, or you can turn the bolster across. Okay? 
that actually feels better for me. So I'm pushing a little bit away from the wall. So I have my feet still added and I'm lengthening into a version of up dog. That works better for me as bolster across the mat. Okay. Now, if you need to lower down onto your elbows, like on the blanket, because it's too much wrist work, go for it. But feel how the length is in the front of the hips. It's a lot of action to attempt this, I think. It's a bit of a, bit of a workout to keep this resistance going. But the legs probably could keep doing more, right? The arms can't, they get a little pooped. So when you lower down the knees, I want you to just push it. You got a chair like me in your way, push it away. Lower down so your elbows are on the blankets and push into your feet. Now, if you have your bolster lengthwise, it might be nicer on this version, straight underneath your core. But I want you to push into your into the wall with the toes at the base, press. And if your weight is on your hip different, left or right hip, I want you to try to go a little side to side till you can feel the balance in both hips. Now, press down into your forearms, not just your elbows, but the rest of the arm towards the wrist. And then let your head tilt down and really try to push into the wall here. I'm gonna have a little resistance with it. I find it's a tiny bit challenging in the mid body. Okay. Now relax your knees down. Oh, feels nice to let them go. Bring your hands back to the floor. Elbows lengthen, straighten out. Lift up your gaze. Okay, now let's get to our, our work with our standing. So feel how you move back to table, okay? And then feel how you can lift up your knees and walk your feet a little forward. Okay, now hands on, on bolster or anything below you to help you get up gradually. Round your back. I know some parts of me you won't see on the top when I come up, I notice. But as you come up, I want you to work on just take a moment with your feet under you, right under your hips, and your mind centered, maybe eyes just momentarily closed. Okay, now feel if you tilt forward, if you tilt center to the back. So I want you to be right into the middle, centering of your feet. Okay. So now we're gonna move some props around. I want you to move your bolster to next to the wall, anywhere, any side. And then get your, let's see, your chair can be right in the middle of the mat, away from the wall, not against the wall. And if your blankets are on your mat, let's just kind of move them to the side just so we don't have any possible accidents with them. Okay, so what I want you to have is your block. Can you see part of me? You still see some of the items here. Okay, you want your block, one block is good. And you want your chair, how, will, how far will it be? Let's find out. So all I have is my body, my wall, my block, my chair. Okay. All right, so when you have your block, I want you to put it on the, if you're looking at your chair, it's the right, we gotta go chair anatomy class again. <laughs> the right, when I'm looking at it from away from the wall, this is the, the right, uh, uh, basically foot of the chair leg. And if you have your block tilted up, it's going to be a measurable calf stretch. So get ready. So your left foot steps back, the heel is at the base of the wall. If I'm too close to my chair, all I do is kind of push, push it forward and then reset. Don't worry about that. But I want you to let your right foot toes up and be at the, can you see that on my, yeah, you can see that part of my props. Okay, good. I know I told you this was questionable recording day. Uh, <laughs> If anything, it'll be good to see what we ended up doing. So my hands could be here. My elbows could be if my wrists are tired. If I want to lower down to my elbows, but um, I round my back too much, I could toss a blanket or two on top of the chair so there's less rounding. So the calf, though, I can really feel that in my right calf. So if I try to get my hands on the back of the chair, that can be a little dangerous, right? You could, you could toss your chair back. So I would say hold your chair down. It's just a good practice so you don't lose it. 
Now, if I can lower my elbows, I'll try, but then that tends to hyperextend my leg for me personally. I can feel it kind of strips the back too much. So let's take just a few more moments. Make sure that you're far enough away from the wall so you do feel this right calf stretch. You can always get your foot closer to the, the heel closer to the block. It's never quite right where you want it, but always work to there. Okay. Now you notice that your hips are a little bit kind of, there's a little bit of an offset of balance. Okay, so slide the right foot under the chair seat. Okay. Now I want you to get your hands on that back bar of the chair and do a little micro bend with your right knee. Just practice so that you can balance the weight into the arch. Now the back heel is at the wall. If it's up the wall, like a little bit lifted, that's okay. Just be careful that you're not like starting to toss the chair and get it to, to buckle here. So I try to find that stability into my right leg. Oh, I can feel my leg pretty well now. Legs are, are certainly at 90% awareness. Okay. Now feel if your right knee can bend a little more. If your chair is too close, just push it a little farther away. Yeah, you might find, oh, I gotta move my chair. Just be careful because it will respond in your back quickly. You'll feel your back have to activate to move it. So bend the right knee so you feel like you're in a bit of a lunge. Okay, and now lower your hands to the seat of the chair and press straight in the right leg. Bring your right hand to your sacrum. Now this is important for lumbar um, stability because that's the area of the spine that tends to have the, well, I think it's mostly because they study it most on scans. I don't know if you could say it's, but you don't get scans in that area very often, but I mean, upper spine, you don't get much in the cervical unless you have a problem there. So try to keep this length in the waist, right? In the ribs, all the stuff we always work through. But you want to do your rotation in your thoracic. So I don't want you to let the sacrum area twist, right? So if you look down at, back to your right thigh at the top and the other thigh, you want those to stay really rock solid, okay? So when you turn to your right, this is real elementary motion, but this right hip is not twisting. I'm turning my thoracic vertebrae to the right. My right arm, left arm is straight. And I, I'm, I could keep my arm on my back, but I'm gonna lift up my right arm and try to let my ribs turn a bit. Breathing. Inside of the right foot pushes down. Real important, it feels kind of refreshing to do this in my legs. Stimulate the bones, because it stimulates the hip in the hip, the leg work. Okay, now turn your head towards the chair, down to the chair, and then feel if you can get that right arm to reach over the right side of your face a little bit towards the side of your ear. Good, and then lower that right hand down. And let's just take a little bit of um, experience. We're gonna lunge, and then I want you to push, so my hands could be palms on the chair, a good thing to have if, you have if you're doing some chair work is one of those um, piece of mat on the chair. I just didn't get around to getting one, but you can put your hands on the side of the chair so you're gripping the edge and step the right foot back. And then I want you to lean forward so you're in that up dog. Use your arms to push away, lengthen front. You can always come down to your knees to do it, but it's a little more enriching for the thigh here. And it's the heart, right? The heart gets involved. Okay, come back to, this is like chair table, table. <laughs> okay, now bring your feet as wide as your mat. Let your seat move back to the wall and stretch out your back. Table. Wonder if that's some sort of word that, who knows. Let's not go there. So feel where the arms lengthen and your back stabilizes. Okay. Now, when you push down to your feet, you try to feel your feet do a lot of the work here to get your spine to go up. Yeah, my habit is I push into my hands and my wrists. 
but my legs are a little more steady to do the movement. You know, they're just more powerful. So push into your feet to get your head to lift and then move your block to the left side of the chair. Let's not spend too much chair anatomy uh, discussion, but step your left foot to the block. So my foot is flexed, right? So if you can't see it very well, your foot has got to be flexed up the block. If you don't tolerate that, you can certainly have your bottom of your foot on the ground and still get a pretty good stretch. So if it doesn't work for the block, like I've got an issue in my tissue, I can put my foot under the chair and still work with a little bit. It's just not quite the same amount of intensity, is it? So if it works, try that. If not, just take a few moments after class and we can discuss some options, okay? Now use your hands so your chair doesn't slide away, right? So if your chair is sliding, it's, it's kind of your fault, right? You've got to use your arms to push it down. Part of the, the session is about resistance, right? So push the chair down so you don't slide out, okay? So my back is in a mild arch, but I'm really focusing on my calf, my left calf. Maybe the hamstring. Okay, now slide the left foot now, step it under the chair seat. Take your hands up on the back bar and bend the left knee. It's okay if you bend it a lot. It doesn't need to be just micro motion. But, you know, pumping the leg back and forth is probably not as helpful for our back as keeping it solid. But I think you want to be a little careful about bouncy movements um, in these poses. So find solid. If you're straining, like your heart rate is going up because it's pretty vascular posture, you can always take a break, right? If you need to take a break, maybe for you it's not pushing down, maybe it's hands on hips and just stabilize for a few breaths and then come back. Because this reach is a little bit more of the heart, right? Versus holding and stabilizing. There's a little more energy to push away from the center. So manage that stretch through the upper back. And lower the right hand to the chair and then left hand to the sacrum. So if you're not sure that's the base of the spine, it's a flat triangular bone. You know, you probably aren't like um, on the nubs of it, but you can get a feel at the base of the spine. Now, one side you might find when you turn, you feel like your hip does turn a little bit, like quite a bit. So you have to be a little careful. It's like you want to dissect this center body. Like, so if I touch my belly and I can feel the belly itself or kind of the looseness in that area, I want to try to work with my breath moving there. And then I'm trying to twist. So you can actually get hold on to the abdomen itself and try to get that to turn with you, which is kind of fun to do, to, to touch onto the belly, turn it. So then you move up into your ribs. And then you move your left hand to the sacrum or towards the ceiling. So my right hand is forward. If I'm drawing a line of an exact line of my right leg, right? So you want to kind of notice your arm would be straight down from your right hip, not too far in, not too far out. Your feet are in two different tracks. This is important. Keep working on making it in just improvements. And then that left arm starts to lift up. So get a feel of rotation, breathe. It only helps. <laughs> Good, get a feel where your calf stretches, the leg bands might be tilting. So it's good, you're working on your ribs if you're feeling your body weight tilt to your back heel. You're tipping over a little bit probably. And then look down to your right, to your chair and left hand lowers down. And it, let's say you have kind of not a yoga chair and it's a little bulkier. This, it'll work okay, right? So your, your focus is not sitting through the chair in this practice right now, but it'll work for this. So as I come down, what I want you to move is your left foot so it's kind of centered under the chair. And we're gonna just do a little bit of balance for a moment. I don't wanna overdo this timing on it. Scoot the chair away. If it's a big clunky chair, you gotta use some muscles to get that to push away. Lift your right foot up at the wall, right foot pushes, 
Door one, this is door one. If that's the most you wanna go with, that's fine. Door two, turn the foot out. So you're in half moon. Yeah, you gotta lift up around, I see it. Left hand onto the chair, right arm moves up. Yeah, give it a try. It's been years since you did half moon, it's okay. It's just another opportunity to find balance and to lose balance too. Good, lower the right hand down, bring the right foot down, lift the left foot back up at the wall. Walls are good, you could be too close to the wall and that's okay, it might feel better for you. And first things first, you feel that left foot to the wall, toes down, turn the left foot out, so it turns the hip. The nice thing is it strengthens down to that right leg and up into the hip joint, left arm stretches up. Yeah, so rotate. And if the rotation is minimal, that's okay. You're still working on the stability, yeah, into that right thigh. It's not the most elegant, but it's circulation. Lower the left hand down. Yeah, just a little bit of it. And then lower down the left foot entirely. Stretch back for a moment. Push back so you're on the tippy toes. On the, tippy, on the tip of your nose. Don't try that. And then come down to the knees. Whew. Put the chair away. Really. Sorry for the scratchy sounds. Okay. All right. Now, let's take a blanket. Dab in the middle of your mat. Uh, turn. Feels like we did something. Your bolster, so it's against the wall. And this is a pretty entertaining sequence, isn't it? <laughs> Put the blanket in the center. Thanks for trying to follow along because I know this is this is a bit of a all over the place. Okay, so bring your feet to the wall. You gotta figure this out. It feels good to be on your back, I'm sure, right now, but after the harness rain has gone up, we wanna kind of keep it moderate. We don't wanna just suddenly plummet that focus. So don't just lie back to sleep. So at first we put our spine back, our head on a blanket, our feet up at the wall, right angle with the knees. Some of us will be closer, some of us will be farther back. But take a ball, or if you don't have a ball, use a block between the knees, ball preferred, and feel the closeness you are to the wall so the feet can actually touch it. They don't have to be real forceful pushing, but you wanna be able to touch the wall with the feet. Okay, more than touch, but access pressure a little bit. Now squeeze into the ball, like squeeze the ball in so you're smushing it and then release the grip. Let's just do that, or re repeat that a few times on your own. Squeeze and release. So the muscles that you're just kind of engaging with, keep going with it. And the standing poses, you can feel that circulation um, Repetition in your legs over and over for, I don't know, we did 10 minutes at least with standing patterns, didn't we? Um, so this is starting to cycle on the inner leg into the, into the hip flexors and then to the psoas. So push to the wall, just hold the ball between the legs. You don't have to squeeze it as much. Lift up your hips and bring your arms overhead. And if your neck doesn't like this blanket, shift it away. It's nearby, you can always move it back and forth. Lower your spine and ease the spine all the way down. Go smooth, just lift the hips, stretch the arms back overhead and lower the spine. Try to massage through the spine. And I think moving the arms up a little bit helps that maneuver, you can always try it without the arms moving. And then just kind of notice, well, it's not quite the same magnitude in my, across the, the, what branches out from my spine. So let's take one more. If you slid a little bit back from the wall, scoot back into it. I don't want you to get minimal contact, but lift the hips, let the arms move back, be careful of your neck. You don't want to jam the chin to the chest and then lower the spine. Okay, so knees to chest, remove the ball, 
And now you're going to scoot back. You have to move your blanket if it's there for your head. And you're going to um, bring your feet to the bolster. And I want you to go ahead with the lift. So you'll lift the hips up and you'll slide a block. You'll find out how close you are to the wall in a moment. Cross the back so the block is under the sacrum at the second setting and it's, it's across, right? So horizontal. Now I'm gonna scoot the, the block so it's it's under the, the back of, it's a little lower than the back of my pelvis. It's really under the, the um, glute media. So it's kind of the buttock area you're touching with the block and you actually lie into it. So bring the right knee up and the left leg straight to the wall. So you're trying to push into the wall. Try to get that left hip flexor. And then I'm going to use my hands to be palms down on the ground and then bring the left knee in. It's not close into my chest. I just let the leg pop up. Push the wall with my right foot. If you're not close enough, get a little closer to the wall. And then let both legs straighten down to the bolster. Right? So you have a bolster under your lower leg bones a block under the rear. So for me, I have mine under my rear today, more than my sacrum. You could have it up at the sacrum. If you feel like it's a little pinchy, like it's kind of strange tension along the sides of your spine when the block is this low, what you're trying to do is get these hip flexors to open, open up this fascia in the front of the, the thigh lids. So your work would be kind of pushing the balls of the feet into the wall to try to help that out, which might help your back, okay? If it doesn't do the trick and you need to change and find something that works for you, that's fine. But if I touched around my block on the ground, it's a little tilted. And I like that. It feels kind of nice for this hip flexor span. But if you don't like strange things, then you might not want your block to tilt at all. But if you know your back is not, it's not a straight line, so I think you need the block very flat is, is not appropriate spine messaging because your spine is not straight, straight, right? You want to lengthen it. So I would push, push, push into the wall. Yeah, use the balls of the feet to push. Arms could be palms open, shoulders relaxing. Find a blanket support, it's good for you. Breathe slow. Exhale completely. Relax your pressure into the wall. Just be for a few moments. You can adjust your block any way you like. If you have a different idea of bridge pose, go for it. Just fine. If you need to take the block out and move the bolster and make it different, this is the time. And get a feel for the kind of fizzling of awareness in the legs from the standing pose. It's like the circulation spans nicely in this final set. You might start making friends with this position in your back after a couple minutes. Okay, if you were to touch along the spine and and go inside to feel your skin, you'll notice that there's a lot of length here. It's not a crunchiness, okay? Now, as you walk your feet onto the bolster, knees point up, do just the right amount of pressure through your feet, just a tad to slide the block out. Be careful, you don't wanna jam the back up, but see if you can do a tad. Lower the spine, okay? Now we're gonna take our bolster to the right side of our mat, kick it over, be careful of your back, just let it be easeful on the ground. Push the bolster to the right side of the mat, right leg down, if you're too close to the wall, scoot a little back. Left leg crosses to the bolster. Now, if this bolster is too low, you can add your other blanket on top. And I like the ball support around the sacrum area, maybe a little lower. And then I, I prefer some sand on my side leg, on the left side. You don't have to use sand if it feels too, too aggressive of pressure into the leg. It's fine to go minus sand or plus. 
And then after you decide your plus and minus options here and decide on something, the, the side of that bottom leg is probably on the ground. Right, you're not on the back of the right leg, you're on the side, on the bottom. And then let your head roll to the left. I took your time, fuss around with your sand, deciding if you're adding more or if you're going to work with the simplicity of feeling the leg cross over, the eyes relax in, the abdomen moving with the breath. And now when you come back to center with your head, it's been moved, take the sand aside and remark on the left side into the hip, how you flow the stretch. So you can mimic the same on the second. And then as you pull that left leg up, move the ball. You know, there's ways to um, emphasize the, the appropriate balance from one side to the next just by self-study. So, you know, I think we just start to do a little more of that with, with, with age, right? A little bit of self-study for better or worse. So, you know, just notice when you move your bolster to the left side, you know, what your habits are when you, when you cross over. You probably have a little different habit with the leg swing that has, has, has a history of your movement. So it's always interesting to do some self-study and just observe. And if it feels like you move into it, quite in different on one side or the other. Maybe that's something to reflect on some other time, but try to get right into the second side. And it might not be the exact way you got in the first side or it feels a, a mild difference in that position of pressure with the sand. But if you use the ball, I use that and let your right arm open and your head roll to the right. And just get a feel of the weight of that right leg over to the bolster. So I want you to get the hips a nice stretch before we get the legs up the wall so they can really flush out. So trying to overstimulate the stretch is not required, but feel plenty of the leg crossing to the left. You know, with a few more moments, balancing out the timing. Remove the ball and the sand, slide it close down towards the wall. Okay. Roll to the left. Use your hands to bring you up. Pull the blanket in towards the wall, the bolster right against it. And then when you sit to the bolster, you know, some days you can try going from the center of the bolster. I tend to find I fall off the bolster if I start in the middle. I can't seem to stay on it. So I go to the very edge of the bolster with my seat to the wall. And feeling that ability to roll the shoulder under, slide it under and swing the legs up the wall is kind of the key is that rotation. But when you do come up to the legs lifting, then add some sand to your feet. If you're going to do a, another pose right now for inversion, be sure that you you're working with that balance of both sides, right? The, 
the lift of the legs. So if you're doing chair shoulder stand, this is a good opportunity if you're going to play with that. But as I get my legs up the wall for this observation, I've got the spine tuning of my spine. So some versions of this where the seat is distant from the wall sometimes feels good to me. So I think I'm not really realizing that until I have spent many more years doing it. So if I'm just kind of clammed down into the bolster and I'm pressing into it with my hips, that's not always the best way. So you might have to kind of wiggle your ribs and kind of get a feel for how you want to be on the bolster or if you don't want to be entirely on it. If you seat a little on the other, it's okay, on the other side. Okay, the legs don't have to be pushed against the wall. Flex the feet, maybe sand, maybe no sand. If you don't want to use sand, you want your feet to be kind of free. You could use a belt around the legs so that the legs stay together. So you need something to keep them connected. The sand keeps them kind of balancing something. Otherwise they fall kind of apart. Okay, stretch the elbows wide into cactus. Feel where the neck is in the accurate place of support on a blanket and then let your head weight release back and feeling if the neck continues to stretch and gather your attention on the even rhythm of your breath. Great. Yeah, and if the hip connectors from the top of the leg into the waist feels a little seized up. Regenerate the movement of the abdomen so you can let that kind of fill that gap. Just that fluidity. There's two really active directions in this pose for the vascular system. Right with the legs upside down and then the hips lifted. So exercise your ability to breathe slow and thoroughly, both sides of breath. Yeah, feel vast in the chest. So the arms can be still in a bent position, but there can still feel a vastness across the, from the each arm through the chest to the other arm. And let that area be almost like a, a bridge right in the mid body, lifting with movement of breath. It's not a bridge as much as it's kind of an arc. Take a slow, deep breath in, fill the belly. Exhale out through the mouth. And now feel the legs lifting into the sand and then move the, the legs away from the wall. So they're just straight up vertical, kind of a, a circulation change, right? Muscles. And then bend them and remove the sand if you toss it overhead. So be it off to the side. And feel how the legs hug in on their own without having to grip them. It's nice to remind your, your body parts to kind of just work on their own. <laughs> you have to keep giving them some strengths to work through, right? Work on your own legs. And then roll to a side. Maybe you didn't roll the last side. And let your hands help bring you up. And use your hips to balance down onto the bolster against the wall. And feel how it kind of your hips are pretty snug into the attachment of the leg and the leg kind of motions out. So this is kind of that, how you create 
those leg opener poses anyhow, okay? Maybe your head can touch back towards the wall so you can meet the shoulders back. That's up to you. Sometimes your shoulders will find a version of themselves that are farther down. That's what we hope, <laughs> less clinging farther down. Slide the hands to meet in prayer position in front of the heart center and create a moment here of balancing from the mood of practice, the discipline, into the unity of our breath. Inhale and exhale, bowing into your heart. Namaste. Thank you.